Hi everybody, this is Charles Hoskinson. Since I've left Twitter, I think I feel a little bit better um, at providing a nice Periscope update. Uh, since Anyway, I just wanted to talk a bit about uh, where we're going, what's going on. Uh, so uh, I want to announce that Cardano 1.3 has successfully gone through QA, and we have begun the process of uh, starting the update uh, for everybody in the ecosystem. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what's in 1.3 and when the update's coming. Uh, so we should submit the update proposals sometime tomorrow, unless there's some sort of delay. Uh, there probably won't be. Uh, it takes about 12 hours for that to percolate throughout the network. Uh, so that update should be seen probably around the 8th to the 9th, uh, just depending on how things operate and exactly when we get that proposal through. So let's talk about what's in Cardano 1.3 and uh, the new version of Daedalus. Uh, so first with Daedalus, uh, we've done a lot of refactoring and some efficiency improvements. Uh, memory utilization has gone from about 1.5 gigabytes to 2 gigabytes down to about 150 megabytes to 200 megabytes. Uh, so we're about 90% less memory usage. Um, on the network side of things, we've made considerable refactoring and improvements to the network stack. And we should be sitting at about uh, a 300% improvement for the time it takes to download uh, blocks. Uh, so things have really been improved tremendously there, and we're uh, pretty excited about where that's going to go. Uh, so a lot of little efficiency improvements, a lot of network improvements, uh, some changes that will probably resolve the connecting to network issue that a lot of people are having. Uh, not everyone, but certainly a, probably a large subset of the people who are having connecting to network issues should be pretty happy about uh, the improvements made there. Uh, and as I mentioned, there's a lot of memory improvements, a lot of efficiency improvements. The code quality is overall very good for 1.3. So we're pretty excited about it, uh, and we think that you guys are going to be pretty happy about 1.3. Not to be outdone, uh, the dev cutoff for 1.4 is September 4th, and then it'll begin the QA process. 1.4, as I've mentioned before, is going to be the largest update for Cardano, and 1.4 should have uh, a lot of really good things underneath the hood. Uh, we're going to go from a file system that uses about 1.3 million files to store your, the uh, blockchain to about 44,000. Uh, the wallet backend specification has been fully implemented, and we'll go in there, uh, alongside a lot of our core refactoring, which uh, I think makes the core code a heck of a lot easier to test and overall just higher quality than what we inherited. Uh, so uh, 1.4 is definitely going to be a huge update. We're pretty excited about it. Uh, we've also begun the process of specifying out everything for Shelly. Uh, so we have about 21 major work units we have for Shelly to do. Some can be done in parallel. Uh, some of them can be done linearly. So that uh, will be done probably by the end of this month along with time estimates for it. So we should have a clear, cleaner idea at the end of this month of exactly when we think we can roll out Shelly or at least when the major work packages for Shelly are done. Uh, a lot of the things that were holding us up, like the incentive scheme, have been finished. The paper's been published and I believe pushed out publicly. Uh, the delegation specification has been uh, uh, finished and, uh, and it's ready to go. And the paper for that, I think, is either public or soon to be public. Uh, but it's basically done. Uh, and uh, a lot of the Shelley particular mechanics, like the network stack and so forth, we've, we've converged to a design we're very happy with. So it took a few more months than we thought it would take, but you know, it's a slightly harder thing than we thought it was going to be. And that's okay. That's how engineering works, and uh, we feel pretty good. Um, so overall, uh, we're having a heck of a lot of fun uh, trying to get these things out. Uh, we're having a heck of a lot of fun slowly but surely working our way through the enormous backlog and trying to make things a little bit more efficient, getting our QA cycles down a bit. And uh, we've been working with some outside uh, parties like Tweak and Allied Testing to, to do that. And uh, as we get through 1.3 and 1.4, the Cardano code quality is definitely going to get to a point where I think a lot of people will be real happy about it. Now, that said, uh, there's going to be a subset of users who just for whatever reason, are not going to have a good experience with the Cardano code that we currently have. So uh, we wanted to take some time uh, to go ahead and uh, build an alternative client that people could use for embeddable devices, ATMs, uh, Intel SGX-style deployments, uh, and lighter weight experiences. Uh, so we actually wrote a parallel code base called Prometheus, and we wrote this code base in Rust. 
Vincent Henquez is the uh, product manager for that. And actually, we're going to have our first demo come September internally for the completed version of the command line interface for Prometheus. But Prometheus is a library of different functionality, and third parties should be able to use that library for their own product lines. We've actually already tested Prometheus on Android devices and iOS devices, and our feeling is very rapidly that this would make a good foundation for mobile clients and for light clients. Um, in addition to that, Come August 15th, there's going to be an announcement of a new product that's based on Prometheus as its core, uh, and that product is going to be based in um, Google Chrome. So it's going to be a Chrome extension. We're going to go ahead and leave it for Emergo to make the announcement on August 15th about particularly what's been launched, but its heart is Prometheus, an IOHK product, and we're really excited about the quality of that code, and we're really excited about the capability of that code. and. Uh, we're already starting to see people wanting to use it, and we're not even quite done with it yet. So we actually have two code families. There's the Rust Cardano and the Haskell Cardano, where Haskell Cardano is the reference code. It's where it allows us to implement things from a formal spec and do lots of cool and interesting things. Uh, and the Rust Cardano code is more modular and more library-like, and that's really used for third-party developers who want to build their own wallets, especially on the mobile and light wallet side. Uh, and that code is going to be um, useful for... Uh, you know, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, things like ATMs and, you know, ledger devices and these types of things. Uh, we've also been in discussions with Saren Labs, for example, about using the Rust code as opposed to the Haskell code for the thinning. Uh, so look for that. Uh, the repo is open already. Uh, and uh, come September, uh, you should be able to pull it and uh, deploy your own uh, command line interface. And uh, hopefully the hacker community can have some fun with that and play around with it. Okay, um, now uh, there's been a lot of a questions about delegation center, staking, POS. We've repeatedly said that that's Shelley. Uh, we've repeatedly released information on it, but for some reason it doesn't keep uh, sticking in the community, and that's okay. Uh, so uh, there is about 21 work units required for Shelley, uh, and at the end of this month we should have a pretty good understanding of how those work units are going to get done, who's going to do it, and the deadlines and timelines for those. There's nothing that can be done to accelerate it. It's just going to have to work its way through, and we'll let you guys know about the, uh, the timing for these things. So anyway, this is a brief update. Uh, 1.3 is coming out next few days. If you're having connecting to network issues, if you've had issues with Daedalus using too much memory, uh, if you're having issues with Daedalus being very slow in downloading the blockchain, the hope is that this can dramatically speed up things for you. Uh, 1.4 is on the horizon. Just to be exceedingly clear, September 4th is not when it's shipping. Uh, that's when the dev cub off is going to happen. Uh, and uh, at that point, it enters QA. And so QA takes a little while. We're going to try to get the QA cycle down, and hopefully October is when it's going to ship. But uh, we'll have a feature freeze, code freeze, around early September for 1.4. And then however long QA takes is when we're going to ship that. As for Shelly, uh, we're going to be gradually rolling things out. Um, the Byron testnet is coming out sometime this week. Uh, the Shelly testnet will come out sometime over the next coming weeks to months. Uh, and as features like delegation and, in, and the incentive scheme and so forth are built out, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, roll that out into the Shelly testnets. And um, our hope is to have lots of stake pools. In fact, the latest number we've been batting around is over 1,000. Uh, and our hope is to try to make the protocol as decentralized as possible and as efficient as possible. And we're really happy about the overall design. Uh, a few more housekeeping items. Vitalik Buterin saw it fit to have a discussion about Ouroboros on our forums. Um, we felt that Reddit is not the proper place to have a debate. Uh, so we've decided to write a formal rebuttal to his questions about Ouroboros and some of our questions about the design of Casper. So sometime this week, we probably will turn that rebuttal over to our comms department for it to be turned into a blog post for IOHK's website. So uh, look for that as well, and we hope to have a vigorous debate with Mr. Buterin about uh, his impressions of Ouroboros, as well as some of the work that he's done with Casper, which is still a bit murky for us to understand, given that it's coming from multiple sources. So uh, look for that as well. A final statement about Twitter. Uh, I've uh, decided to leave Twitter, uh, except for Periscope videos. Uh, the primary reason is that I feel the communication medium has become toxic. Um, 
I have very limited time. I run an international company. We operate in 16 countries. I travel dozens of places every single year. Uh, and if I have a simple question for a company, uh, a very small company of just a few people, whom I assume those few people are probably the ones who run their Twitter feed, and I get a response where an article is written that I'm a monster. Uh, there's a, a top-rated cryptocurrency Reddit post about how bad of an actor I am. What's the value of this platform? You know, it's a broadcast medium. That's what we're going to use it for. That's what I'm going to use it for. But I've decided to leave the platform and stop sharing my personal life. Um, that's just the consequences of how toxic the cryptocurrency space has become and the lack of empathy and humanity in the cryptocurrency space. So while we have an obligation to report to the community what's been going on, we don't have an obligation to empathize or to relate to the community uh, and share our personal lives with that. That's a luxury and one that can be revoked. So I've decided to leave Twitter. Uh, I've decided that there's no longer any value in this platform when every post I have is bombarded by bots claiming to give away ether. It's bombarded by trolls who attack me. In some cases have death threats or personal threats or post my address or say things about my family. Uh, there's just no point into being a platform like that. So I'm going to stick to the Reddits, I'm going to stick to uh, Telegram, and I'm going to stick to Periscope. Uh, and uh, we're going to get Cardano done. And we're going to make sure that Cardano is the best product on the marketplace. And we're going to make sure the community is well informed. And we'll use multiple channels to do that. Uh, and uh, I hope that we'll, uh, we'll get to where we need to go. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for your time, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.